Good afternoon. My name is Delene Allen, Executive Director of BNI Nova Scotia. That's Business Network International. I want to introduce you to one of our BNI members. This is Peter Skakem of Tangent Strategies. And I have to tell you, he's a whiz at what he does. And more of you, um, more of the people that are likely looking at this, you need him more than you know. You need him more than you will ever know, especially during something like COVID-19. Right, Peter? Absolutely, Daylene. We have to keep on selling. You got it. Uh, how should companies be selling during these COVID times, Peter? I think one of the most uh, important things is to reach out to people. To, you know, in a, in a way, selling hasn't changed that much just because of the the virus. It's changed our ability to meet face to face. But beyond that, it, it hasn't changed that much. It's important to reach out. Uh, I found that people are more, um, they're, let's put it this way, they're less, less cynical when it comes to having a salesperson call them. They are more tolerant. They are more willing to talk. They are more candid. And people seem to really like to and warm up to talking. And we can't wait for this to be over. We need to stay in touch now so that when it is over, we hit the ground running and our prospective clients and our clients don't think during this time that we've forsaken them. So exactly. stay in touch, telephone calls, Zoom meetings. It's wonderful. It's a great time to talk to people. Excellent. Okay. And what are the best questions to ask when reaching out to clients or prospective clients at this time? Yeah, well, one of the worst questions is, how are you doing? And it, it's kind of like, how are you? It's kind of an empty, an empty, sentiment and question. But I found, because I'm truly interested in knowing, the question that I ask is, how are you adapting? Oh. How are you adapting to the to the virus to the current situation and i found that again people are, are are very willing to answer that question frankly candidly honestly and you know they may say we've shut we've shut down completely or they may say all of our people are working at home or they may come up with something entirely unexpected and the reason I ask that question is because I firmly believe that part of the selling responsibility is to conduct marketing research. We are the eyes and ears of the companies we represent and, or, or that employ us. And so by asking how people are adapting, it gives us a sense of how we should stay in touch with them. What do they need now as opposed to what we think they may need? So that's, that's, the million dollar question. Perfect. And why is it you do not encourage cold calling and commission sales, Peter? Well, that's a great question. And first of all, I mean, cold calling, whether it's cold calling on the telephone or cold calling walking in cold to someone's office, is frankly, it's off putting. People don't like to be caught. Uh, by surprise, unaware, unprepared. And I mean, cold calling walking into an office, frankly, has, has never been anything but rude. Uh, it is, um, it's intrusive to expect people to drop what they're doing to focus their attention on you just because you, you decided you wanted to walk in and try and make a sale what a what a horrible horrible way to start a relationship we wouldn't do that to to our friends or people we want to be friends with and yet we'll do that to the people we'd love to have so cold calling really surprises people on the telephone though daylene it's 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 really the same thing when a telephone call comes and that person picks up and they're suddenly confronted with a person who wants to sell them something they either on a fight or flight. And again, it's putting people in an uncomfortable position, something they, they did not expect. 
So I don't advocate cold, cold calling on, on any level. And I suspect that after COVID is over, the walking in, I think that's going to be gone. It's going to be gone, just like door-to-door -door sales at houses is long gone. I would recommend, here's what I would recommend uh, when it comes to cold call, when it comes to telephone calls, because you do have to start the relationship somehow. I recommend writing a letter first. Now, if you've got the person's email address and permission to use it, use email. If you don't, use regular mail. And uh, people love getting regular mail. It's, it's not something they get an awful lot of, and if it is, it's usually bills. So I send a letter first and I let them know who, tan who I am, who Tangent is, what our credentials are, and, and that I plan to call them. So by the time I call them, they, they're expecting it. And I might even put an actual date and time. And now that's not to say they're there to be there, but I keep my promise and I'm there and I leave a voicemail and we start a relationship. I'm not catching them off guard. So that's how I do it. Excellent. Well, that's a great idea, Peter. You advocate the presentation of proposals or quotations and mm -hmm. even charging a fee for a proposal development. Tell me more about that. All right. Most of the time, now developing a, a quotation or, or a proposal can be as simple as a printer giving you a quoted price on printing business cards. Very simple, it can be done in an instant. But a lot of proposals uh, for major contracts can take hours, days, sometimes even weeks to develop. That's an awful lot of time that the seller invests in that proposal and they don't get a dime for it. So you imagine, extrapolate, where someone is, is requesting RFPs from say a half a dozen different companies who spend eight hours a piece on developing their proposal. That's an awful lot of man hours that are not being paid for. So it's the custom in our society not to charge for proposals. And if that's the case, then the one thing I recommend is that you present your proposal. You do not mail it, you do not email it, you don't drop it off, you, you present it. In other words, you schedule a meeting with the decision makers who ultimately are going to say yay or nay, you schedule a meeting and they have a copy of the proposal, you have a copy of the proposal and you go through it with them. Uh, in in pre-COVID times, we did this in person. That would be the preferable way. Here, we can schedule a Zoom meeting as, and it's almost as good as in person. And you make sure that all the people who need to be at that meeting, in other words, all of the decision makers are at that meeting. Otherwise, you do not do the presentation. And when you present it, what's great is that if there are any questions, if there are any concerns, if you weren't there, those questions and concerns sort of hang in the air and they can scuttle the entire proposal. Someone says, gee, that's, that's an awfully high price. And, and, and no one can address it, no one can speak to it, except the person who developed the proposal. And if that person's not there, they may all say, you know what, that price is too high, let's go on to the next supplier, forget them. So presentations are of proposals, are huge. Now, when someone asks you to produce a proposal and you know it's going to take a lot of time, and but you've already got a feeling that it's going to go nowhere. You're going to spend hours and hours, days and days, weeks and weeks. You're going to present the proposal and then you're going to find out that they have decided they're going to go with their regular supplier anyway. All they were doing was checking out the price. So anytime I am wondering whether this, whether they are real, whether the prospect is sincere or not, 
the best test is a price. And so what I say, they may say to me, Peter, we'd love you to develop a proposal for us. And, and I'm, I say, well, I'm happy to do that. It'll take a few weeks to do. And is that all right? And they go, yeah, that's fine. And then I say, and our standard proposal fee is, and you can choose whatever standard proposal fee you want. I used to charge $250 because our proposals were huge multi-page projects that involved a lot of a lot of other people and I had to bring all those prices in. So I used to charge $250. So I would say fine, I'm happy to develop a proposal. My standard proposal fee is $250. And I would get one of three responses giving. Response one would be what I call backpedaling. They really weren't sincere. They really weren't planning on making a purchase at all, maybe from no one at all. They were just kicking tires. But they were happy to have me spend eight hours developing a proposal free of charge. So they backpedal and they say, oh, $250. Well, you know, that's, that's okay. But you know, we have to check with our accountant and we're nearing year end. And so it's not a decision we can make right now. And so they, they try to backpedal or back out of the, uh, the, the possibility of buying. And I'm okay with that. I just want to know how sincere they are. The next response is the anger response. And the anger response comes when you've caught someone. In other words, no intention of doing business with you. But again, they're happy to have you develop a, a proposal and go into great detail and spend many unpaid hours. It doesn't cost them anything. But they had no intention of dealing with you. And because you've caught them, they become angry. They say, $250, Peter, I wouldn't pay 25 cents for your, nobody charges for proposals. And they are incensed. And I have been there as well. And I've learned the hard way, and they won't catch me again. I've learned the hard way that they had no intention of dealing with me. Good for you. And that's that's okay. Yeah. Pardon me? I said, good for you, though. I mean, our time is worth money, and if people don't value it, then maybe that's not somebody we really want to do business with. Something else, this is, this is something that I have to promote you, Peter, because you teach the most important thing that 9 out of 10 business people and every mother in the world should have is about selling. You know, when you ask your kids to put their um, mittens on or their boots, you're really selling. But most people in this world never get training in it. And, you know, most businesses today, especially during things like COVID, if they had your expertise, if they had your training. So tell us a little bit more about where they can get information. And we'll put a link in with this uh, video as well. But tell us about some of the programs that you are teaching. Okay. And just before I do, uh, Gaylene, I should tell you the third response. And the okay. third response to, to a, a fee for proposal is there's silence. And then the person says, oh, oh, yes, of course, of course, not a problem. So they were serious. They understand that the people quoting are, are putting many hours into it. And they understand and respect the fact that there must be a fee. And once they do pay that fee, they are pretty much locked into you and the chances of you getting the contract are pretty solid. Yeah. Good so that's, those are the three responses and I've gotten them all and I have many times charged the fee for my proposals and I have, I have never looked back. It works. It works beautifully. That's amazing. But I can yeah. see that. That makes so much sense, Peter. Yeah. yeah. So one of the, programs that I teach is selling strategies for bosses. And the reason I choose bosses is because those are the people who employ salespeople. And if I can't teach the boss how to sell in a way that garners respect 
and admiration and trust, then his or her salespeople aren't going to use those methods either. So I need to have the boss on side and have the boss in the education forums that I develop and that I present so that everyone is on the same page. And in that way, a boss and employer can support and encourage all of the new, all of the new disciplines and principles, selling disciplines and principles that I've taught them. And everyone's on the same page and it works beautifully. Excellent, excellent. You know, for every entrepreneur that ever starts a business, Peter, I believe they need to go to you first and learn those skills so that they, odds are they will be a whole lot more successful in whatever they pursue as far as business is concerned when you're dealing with people. Yeah. I want people to enjoy selling, not to be frightened of it, to enjoy selling and look forward to it and not frighten people, you know, as has been so often the case with, with selling. And it's one of the reasons why I don't advocate commission sales either. Commission selling puts both the salesperson and the people that that salesperson is selling to in a tough position because that person has to make the sale in order to make money. Yeah. And it's a salesperson is like any other professional, he or she needs to be salaried. And it's a great, great analogy. So this is Peter Skakem from Tangent Strategies. And if you want to embrace and understand how to professionally sell, he is your man. I hope you're having a great day out there. All right.